Okay, and welcome. This is a concept. So this is a proof of concept. Um, and I've got my sticker up when it shouldn't be here. So he's going to go away. And therefore, I'll take it back. So this is in the attic. So this is a concept of an idea. Um, obviously, we're... I want to explain what I'm doing. Um, I may not go through with this idea, but it is an idea I'm having for sort of like a story. But I don't want to tell a story in a traditional sense where you just read it on the pages or I just talk to you. I want there to be something visual to watch. Um, so that's why I'm doing this here. And basically it's going to be a Yu-Gi-Oh story, of course. Um, and well, most of it will be spoken like it is now. Um, the duels themselves will be visual, a sort of a visual representation that you can see. For now, I'm doing this alone because, again, it's a concept, I don't have a team, but I do plan to have voice actors and players and all that sort of stuff. So, the first thing I'm going to be doing, obviously, before each thing is we just put it all to the top of the deck. Oh, whoops, above, wrong button. So, top of the deck. And then obviously we're going to have my opponent do the same thing. So we're going to try and play this out as is scripted. Um, I may make some errors, uh, but this is the two players on their starting hand. So obviously the protagonist wins the whatever. The protagonist gets to go first. Obviously it goes by the modern rules of the game so that you do not get to draw here. Um, and they will set three passing turn. Quite an easy three to say. So they'll pass. Now the opponent then has to set up their play. We're going to special summon just a conflict. We're going to activate secret village of the spell casts just to prevent any spell cast or any spell cards from their opponent. We're then going to tribute the just a conflict to normal summon chaos command which cannot be affected by Monster effects, obviously they'd be in that case. Uh, they will enter battle phase and attempt to attack. As a response, a beast stun ray will be summoned in defense mode, which cannot be destroyed by battle. That must just shuts down that first turn. Now at this point, monster effects can't target chaos command magician and spell effects cannot be used at all without a spell cast. So I'll set one card and they'll pass turn. Now our protagonist comes back here and he's got to try and out this board before he can do anything. Royal Decree is activated. So he'll boast about how he doesn't need monsters and spells because he has traps and then Royal Decree is activated, which unfortunately just bricks the Abyss Stone Ray. So our protagonist will then have to try and out this board with the cards he has. He can't use spells and monster effects can't target and he cannot use traps. Uh, fortunately, as you can see with the cards in hand, he does not have an issue with this. Uh, it'll probably not be Trap Eater in hand, we just won't show the hand. Um, but what would happen here is he summons the Marionetta. Which then, if we get the next card off the deck and set it to the Spell Trap Zone, it is uh, a Emulator. So that sets. Next, he can use Magic Planter to get rid of Abyss Stomery and draw two cards. Then special summon the trap eater by getting rid of royal decree now it will be shown that our protagonist has creature swap so this isn't too far-fetched uh, for him to be running trap eater because there will be times that he'll use creature swap to give the opponent a trap monster and then trap eater it so obviously decree here is destroyed trap eater does work well in this sort of deck um, Still not enough to get over the Chaos Command Magician, but this is where he can activate Tiki Soul, Tiki Curse. Move them here. So he was able to use Magic Planner because Marionetta is fortunately a Spellcaster, so that's fine there. Uh, and then Tiki Soul can attack. Our protagonist here does lose a lot of life points, but because of Tiki Curse, both monsters are destroyed. And then direct attacks for 16, 19, and 18. So that's a lot of damage our opponent 
has taken there, the first opponent, um, and is a really good strip to start for the protagonist. Now, the emule itself is on field, but that's not going to do much here. Uh, Breaker of the Magic Warrior is going to come in. Uh, oops. And by entering battle phase, can attack and I believe Marionette is the target here. Yes. That's the only one that can die. Uh, losing 300. Uh, and then using Break of the Magical Warrior's effect, Tiki Curse can be destroyed as well. So that helps clear out the board a bit in favour of our enemy. He can then set one for his main phase two, passing his turn. Now, the protagonist here is going to make a misplay, which is fine. Protagonists can make misplays. He's going to set one card, uh, and then he's going to set two more cards. Oh, he doesn't need to set these yet. He's going to set a monster. Does it intend to search for a trap card uh, once it is flipped up? Unfortunately, here is where he's made his misplay. Magical Dimension gets activated. Destroying this to take out the, or not the trap eater, to take out the cat of ill omen. Which dies, and then Gaga Head is summoned to the field from Magical Dimension. Now, obviously, trap eater can't get over it, neither can Altergeist Emulet Elf. So, our protagonist here set to not much you can do about that that is just too strong a monster and again he's just turned off from spells so he'll pass uh now this is where our villain can do some good plays vanishing a light and a dark to a special summon chaos sorcerer and just banishing the trap eater here so that's gone from the play uh the extra card in the banish zone for this is actually just a card I've accidentally put in. So, whoops, sorry guys. Um, now, this is two strong monsters and the opponent is going to overlay for his rank six. If doing the work. So that comes out in attack mode and because of Gaga Head's ability, he gets to draw a card. Um, now he will enter battle phase and this is where Zoma the spirit gets activated. Now with Zoma's effect if Naruto attacks immediate like the villain obviously loses the duel so he has no choice but to negate this he doesn't want to deal with that. So that gets negated and we lose this. This is where the protagonist will try to take out the opponent here. Now with shorter card did we draw two before off of this? We did. Hmm. Protagonist didn't draw for turn, so should have an extra card. Sorry about that. I told you I would make mistakes. So this is where these two will summon here. Both in defense mode. Uh, and that triggers uh, the Statue of Anguish when Emil Telf is summoned. Tries to destroy this, uh, but with a good Spellbook of Wisdom, it's unaffected by trap effects and can try and take out this strong card which is negated by imperial custom where the opponent will complain about their stalling tactic but have no choice but to pass turn oops that's what i did wrong before i guess i think that's what i did wrong i'm no expert uh maths is hard it's hard to script these um, and I'm obviously very tired at the moment. Now, our protagonist here will try to book a moon, the Naruto. He obviously knows that's a bad idea. And we'll detach a material. And I seem to have lost my place in the script here. I did that backwards. So it is meant to be this in here, uh, this to the top of the deck. Uh, boom. And then, so he sets this and passes his turn. Uh, Purple Poison Magician now comes into play. This is just a genuinely strong card. Um, let's see. 
Uh, obviously, he can't. He still can't get over these cards, but he will pass his turn. Just to put the poison magician on the field. Now this is where we get the Book of Moon played. So Book of Moon is played, targeting this. Uh, which obviously, that's when it gets negated. Material is detached. Then in response, this is summoned to the field. And the Statue of Anguish gets to destroy Naruto. That's gone. That's gone. Now this can swap to attack. Now protagonist gets to put an attack in. Taking out this. The 400. And then the effect of Purple Poison Magician, which should be based on the extra deck. Again, this will obviously be a little less rushed and a lot more edited and cut down and stuff like that when it's an actual thing with proper voice acting. I think the voice acting will just go on afterwards. We'll see how we go. Um, but so Purple Poison Magician can then take out the Imperial Custom, which is not a worry. Uh, and then the Emulet Tales will attack directly for, I believe it's 1200. So here our villain is not doing too well, has very, very low life points. Uh, a good old Charioteer of Prophecy, nice and strong. And by running over the Emulet Elf, it not only does the most damage of 600, it also turns off the access to spells once more. Now, Angel Statue is a very good card, so that'll be set. This will obviously be put to defense to survive the Charioteer, and the turn will be passed. Now, this is an opportunity to clear a monster before it can be tributed into something bigger, or just prevent my opponent using spells. So obviously the Angel Statue gets summoned here, to defense and destroys the chariot here and that again is supposed to shut the opponent down now unfortunately the opponent has drawn the best thing they can and this will add a spell book the spell book they're choosing to add is spell book of secrets which they will immediately activate and grab spell book of knowledge by attributing their one monster they draw two cards the tricky and prophecy destroyer Tributing Prophecy Destroyer, making special summon the Tricky, which is a, something that Angel Statue Azarine can negate, so that gets negated very quickly, which seems to be a very good game state and almost game winning for our protagonist, but it's not over yet. By banishing three spell books, Prophecy Destroyer can summon to the field. Now, rather than dealing with, you know, the obvious set a trap and then activate it and remove this, He's just going to take the opportunity to take out the Angel Statue at the cost of this monster. After all, the Statue of Anguish Pattern has no attack, so this shouldn't be too big of a concern. And it isn't. That's not a card that can attack, so it will be a set and a pass. Black Fang Magician will be the card that the villain opponent summons here. And Obviously, this doesn't do too much, um, except stop our protagonist from creating spells and from attacking directly. Now, I believe, yes, in response, because it can be done, Cyber Shadow Gardener will be activated just to remove the one monster. Unfortunately, that dies, gets to bring back the Chaos Sorcerer. Sure, dueling book. <laughs> uh, and then Chaos Sorcerer will banish the Cyber Shadow Gardener because Anguish Pattern is untargetable. And that will be the end of his turn. Now, a spellcaster on field and no spellcasters for our protagonist means he cannot activate Book of Eclipse. I'm not sure if Book of the Book of Eclipse is the best card for this situation. But I've said it. Uh, passing turn. So uh, that gets banished, and then the activation of Spellbook of Miracles brings back Naruto and attaches it with Oops. You really have to put these to hand. 
Uh, anyway, it attaches these two spells. So now we've got a powered up Naruto with two negates um, and a direct hit. Just completely destroying the protagonist. Now, at this point, I don't have anything else planned. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm thinking a Lava Golem would be a good way to out this situation uh, on top of Book of Eclipse, because Lava Golem gets around those two negates with no issues. Uh, so I believe that that is the next play here that we have in store, will be the Lava Golem. This is all based on things that actual Trap Monsters players have played throughout history not necessarily right this moment, but they have played these cards. Um, and that's what this deck will utilize, is just things that Trap Monsters players have played. Uh, so then that'll take out these two monsters, uh, giving them the Lava Golem. The Book of Eclipse stops that being a kill, and I think then they'll just sit on Metal Flex Slime while the Lava Golem player slowly burns to death. Uh, but that's as far as the first scripted duel goes. So. We'll be seeing things like that. Obviously, there'll be voice acting and stuff and proper interactions between the two opponents. We might even change up these to be some sort of boss monsters, depending on what I have access to. Um, but feel free to give me ideas as to how this first duel should end. Obviously, we want the protagonist to be winning the first duel of their story. Uh, but the actual proper plot for the story is somewhat loosely planned out. I have an idea of what we're doing. Um, and obviously the deck will grow over time as the protagonist beats more opponents they'll get more uh, cards for their extra deck which will obviously improve because obviously when they beat the there'll be uh, a dinosaur player playing evil czars um, which when they beat they'll have access to Lagia and Dolka thanks to quantum cat and swap mirror so things like that will be good to have um, and maybe a Uriah down the line will get added to the deck Depends on what we can find. Um, but yeah, that's what we have so far. I would love to make this a reality. I could cancel the project at any time. Um, it's a lot of work for what may just be minimal effort, or like minimal interaction and minimal viewership. But I do like big story projects um, and I like to tell a story. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you have sat through this as long as I have, uh, this took me 40 minutes to record. Obviously, it won't take that long to read because I'm not sorting the deck. Uh, watch. Won't take that long to watch. There will be no reading except for the reading I do. Thanks for watching, guys.